Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JVD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Son Charles, because today is the 22nd of April 2020. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's, <laughs> there we go, Wednesday's morning session uh, where we're going to have a Quick, quick look, look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there guys on the top. So. Um, now then, a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. So the figure uh, slowly rises, but not as much as previously. So um, some states are really uh, performing well, I would say, in terms of um, fighting uh, fighting the outbreak. So, uh, so yep, um, for now, like I said, everything's seems to be looking okay. Um, so yep, in terms of that, of course, uh, so yeah, we'll continue monitoring the situation. Now, uh, jumping into uh, the, these some of these indices here, uh, some of these instruments as well. So um, the first one I want to touch on is the German DAX. <clears throat> now, yesterday, the index managed to close outside of this, um, or should I say break the upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March. And the... Um, you can, as you can see, it did drift lower. However, it kind of ended the day somewhere around here, somewhere around this 10,280 zone right here, guys. So maybe just slightly below that. And that's basically the lowest point of 2018. Now, again, what I've mentioned previously, if you remember then uh, on Monday, especially I was saying that in order for us to get comfortable with lower levels on this one, we would like to see a drop below that psychological 10,000 zone. So in a way, although we are seeing here a nice move to the downside, we are seeing a break of this um, upside support line. We're not going to rush into this yet because, again, like I said, we need to see a nice good drop below that uh, psychological 10,000 territory. And only then we could get a little bit more comfortable with uh, slightly deeper extensions to the downside. So keep your eyes on this one. With the upside, still idea, still the same idea remains. We need to see a push above the 10,820 zone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to kind of get comfortable with higher levels. So in a way, a, a push above the 10,820 territory would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yet more buyers could be joining in. So um, in terms of uh, this here, uh, in terms of the whole situation surrounding the market, I mean, of course, the weakness is uh, coming in, coming in, coming in from the the oil market. I mean that that one is collapsing, but I'll get to those uh, a little bit later. The next index I wanted to touch on is Nikkei uh, 225. Now here the index is also trading below its short-term upside support line. What what I was saying previously that we need to see a nice good daily close below this little territory right here, the uh, 18,950 zone. So. As you can see today, we had a, a drift lower, um, but it failed to stay below it and the bulls quickly pushed uh, the price back uh, above this. So we'll continue monitoring this. Um, if let's say we, we still have a few minutes left until the close. Um, so we will continue monitoring this one. And uh, if it stays here somewhere in, uh, in between the uh, this this support zone near the 18,950 and the upside support line, then um, and below this upside support line, then yes, uh, we will for now remain cautious, I would say, because as I said, we would like to see a drop, a nice good close, daily close below this territory, and then we could consider further decline. So uh, at least lower ones, uh, lower levels here and a little bit here to the downside, because 
again, uh, we want to remain careful. Um, in terms of the upside, now previously I talked about this level and probably I'm going to stick to this, this 19,565 territory roughly around here. A nice, a nice good push above this of course could increase the chances of a potential move higher. However, of course for those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a push above the uh, 20,000 uh, 20, territory somewhere around here and then aim for higher levels. So uh, again guys, uh, if we do get a nice push above the that psychological 20,000 20, zone, then uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. So um, that's what's in, in, in regards to the Nikkei, Nikkei 225. So keep your eyes on this. Uh, by the way, this 18,950 zone is the uh, the lowest point of, of 2018, basically. So that's why uh, this is where the uh, the index is currently resting at. So yep, let's continue observing it. Um, now then, the the big problem of the few last days, um, oil. So um, oil is uh, well, it's in, in in it's a madness here in oil um, and uh, basically it's um, well look at it, this move here I mean it drifted lower here um, okay so basically this here is it could be a, well it, it's a C of D here so um, the price is probably you will have slightly different everywhere so um, again different uh, institutions kind of provide slightly different spot price so yep be very careful with that and uh, uh, let's continue observing this but however for now um, for now basically guys looking at this picture I mean it's not really uh, looking good here and uh, we violated this uh, well we violated this uh, 10 10.65 zone that I talked about and also this 9.75 which was the lowest point of um, oh, not this one um, let me just quickly put this monthly chart. So um, we've violated the lowest point that we had here on the chart, basically the uh, the low of the 19, uh, 1986 zone. So uh, in other words, well, not all is good. However, it's a good sign that the, the index managed to, oh, sorry, the index, the commodity managed to get back above this 9.75 uh, territory. So, um, of course, we'll continue monitoring this, but all this is not really looking good here for oil. But again, let's let's see how this month is going to end, um, and uh, then probably we'll take it from there. For now, we're just observing this one, and we're not doing anything with oil. Uh, Brent Brent oil, uh, and by the way, this was the WTI oil, for obvious, obviously. Uh, Brent oil. So here, the commodity is resting on its uh, lowest point of November uh, 2001, or in other words, the lowest point of November, oh sorry, the lowest point of 2001. So it's currently resting around here near the 16.65 zone. Um, it still does have room to go deeper to the downside. We can see that there are some levels right here, uh, like for example, the 9.8. 55 level which is the low of the 1998 zone so although uh, WTI oil is collapsing the uh, Brent oil is still hanging in there however uh, if, if the, all this continues like that then yep we could see this one drifting uh, drifting to the downside further down here so keep your eyes on this one let's see how this is gonna play out but again it's not really looking good here for oil um, Ripple. So, uh, Ripple, let me just jump back into a daily chart on this one. Um, so, Ripple is stuck. Um, it's stuck above this uh, this lowest point of December 2019, uh, near the 0.1760. And on the other hand, it's uh, stuck below this key barrier here, this uh, current highest point of of April, which is around the 0 0.2052 territory. So, in other words, what we're doing here is just waiting, wait, playing the waiting game and waiting for a break through one of these highlighted areas before considering a further short-term directional move. So that's why, guys, for now, keep your eyes on these two areas, the 0 0.1760 and the 0 0.2052. Uh, levels, uh, we need to see a nice good daily close above either above this or below this this highlighted area. 
Uh, Bitcoin also uh, is stuck here in this little range. So uh, six, five, uh, between 6,536 and 7,454 uh, 7, levels. So again, it's the same story, guys. We're waiting for a clear break out of this little range before we could consider a further a short-term directional move. So that's why uh, for now, be very careful. And if we do get a drop, for example, through the lower side of this one, then the next potential target for us will be this right here, the 5,880, 81 zone, which is the low of the 30th of March. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, now then jumping into a few pairs, AUD and ZD. So um, I talked about this one on Monday and basically on Monday we were hanging around below this 1.0532 zone. And what I was saying that if this decides to drift a little bit lower, it could test the 200 EMA um, or even could test this short term upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. However, the pair very quickly reversed uh, yesterday to the upside and today we're seeing a push back above this above this barrier here, the 1.0532, and in a way, everything's kind of leaning more towards the upside. However, uh, given the situation here, uh, we will probably remain a little bit cautious and uh, we will wait for a clear break um, through this barrier here, the high of last week, which is around the 1.0625 zone. And let me just adjust the arrow. There we go. And uh, then, yes, we could maybe consider some higher levels. Until then, uh, given that the pair is a little bit overstretched here to the upside, um, we we still keep in mind the idea that there could be uh, a move higher than reversal here. And basically, we could be ending up uh, forming here a potential symmetrical triangle. But again, that's an it's just an idea for now, just something to keep in mind. But that's why we would prefer to see a push above this barrier if, uh, first in order to kind of aim for higher levels. Um, the next ta target for us could be around the 1.0666 um, or it could go, could go even f uh, higher a little bit here towards the um, 1.0708 level. So keep your eyes on that one. In terms of the downside now, given that it moved a little bit more to the right, um, of course, we will monitor this little area here, this level from which the pair reversed yesterday, um, that's which is around the 1.0484. Um, however, we would like to see a break of this upside line uh, first and, th and then, yep, we could consider uh, some moves lower. And then this is where we will aim for that 1.0352 territory, which I talked about previously. A GBP USD, quick update on this. I mean, I'm uh, not going to spend too much time on it because, uh, first of all, I mean, we do have the UK CPA, CPIs, uh, and probably by the time you're watching this video, the CPIs have, have come out already. So uh, have a look at that, how that's going to react. I mean, we could see something like this maybe happening where a bit of correction here back to the upside could happen, and then another slide could be a, uh, we could see another slide however we will aim only for the 1.2195 for now because that's a very good area of support here previously here you can see that in the beginning of april it also acted as a good area of support so that's why we're going to target this level first if we see a daily close below this level below this 1.2195 then yep deeper extensions to the downside could be possible in terms of the upside we need to see a push back above the 1.2485 before considering uh, the upside again and GBP Aussie now it's a very at a very interesting spot here. So it's currently breaking the this upside medium term upside support line taken from the low of the 30th of July 2019. So but what I've mentioned previously when I was uh, covering this pair was that we need to see a nice good move below this level here below the 1.9291 and uh, then we could uh, aim for further declines. So that's why guys for now uh, be very careful, be very cautious and uh, let's see how this is going to play out. Out. And also keep your eyes on the UK uh, figures, or should I say now probably, like I said, the given that the video uh, has is has come out after the delivery of the of the CPIs, so um, keep your uh, have a look at uh, have a look at those, evaluate those, and uh, well, continue monitoring this upside support line. If the pair somehow stays above this upside upside line. Um, then probably all the uh, all the focus will be on tomorrow because again it might close just bang on on the line and then tomorrow let's say it could open up the the new candle could open outside this uh, outside this upside line below this upside line and then we could see a nice slide so again something to keep in mind something to consider um, for now for now we we're very careful and cautious we're probably more neutral. 
because even for us for the upside here we need to see a push above the 1.9868 zone first and then we could aim for higher levels usd cad quick update here so um the pair is um, pushing higher trying to push higher yesterday the pair closed above this barrier the 1.4182 um, so this increases the chances of a potential move higher however as you can see it kind of retraced back down a little bit here it's still balancing above this 1.4182 uh, zone but we'll be very careful and cautious here guys for now and uh, Yep, for now, for now, continue monitoring this. Uh, like I said, we'll we'll take a cautiously bullish approach. But if suddenly this start, starts sharply dropping below this 1.4182 zone, then well, I mean, probably take a more of a neutral stand because for us to consider the downside would be uh, only below this 1.3856 zone, just to be on the safe side. And finally, Euro USD here. So uh, Euro USD. Um, the pair is again it's still stuck in no, man, no man's land uh, I talked about this on Monday and to be honest since Monday it hasn't moved much and it still remains below these uh, or sorry, between these two uh, two levels here the 1.0777 on the downside and the 1.0953 uh, uh, on the upside so um, in a way uh, what we could do here is probably first of all get rid of these two, uh, two lines so the upside and the downside lines so now uh, looking at this picture, uh, we can actually draw another tentative uh, downside line taken from here. So somewhere and uh, somewhere from here, basically. And uh, and basically now this level as well. And I've mentioned this one previously. So actually we can reevaluate this again because looking at this picture right now, it's um, it's forming somewhat of an uh, of a descending triangle as you can see here so um, let's see if that plays out of course as you know according to all the technical analysis rules these tend to break to the downside however we cannot really do anything until we see that clear break now in terms of the upside what we're gonna do here is for now we're not gonna have a clear level uh, we're, we will focus on this downside line taken from the high of the 29th of March and we will keep an eye on the 200 EMA on the 4 hour chart so if we get a break of this downside line and a push above the 200 day EMA then uh, 200 sorry not day 200 EMA on the four hour chart then yes we could consider some higher levels until then uh, we're just going to remain neutral and just continue observing the price action here again as I said it might be forming a uh, possible descending triangle however in order to aim for lower levels we need to see a drop below the 1.0777 zone and only then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside so okay guys I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening and uh, if you want to catch my video later on my traders tea time uh, that's 1315 GMT or should I say around that time a little bit maybe after but um, yep cap uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and uh, yep we'll take it from there but thank you very much guys for watching and listening thank you for your you know if you're, I appreciate your all your likes and, and comments and uh, yeah guys stay safe uh, both uh, health wise and market wise and I'll see you later bye bye